Hello everyone, I'm Miss Carrie here at the New Jersey State Museum. Welcome to Small Explorers. All this month we have been talking about fossil tales of New Jersey. We've talked about turtles. In our live session we talked about Ice Age fossils from here in the Garden State. And today, boys and girls, we are going to talk about dinosaurs. Can you guys give me your best roar? Roar! Okay, explorers, today's sign language sign is dinosaur. This is another two-handed sign. Get your two hands out. Small explorers, if any of you have T-Rex as your favorite dinosaur, you know that T-Rex has tiny little arms and little clawed hands. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to tuck our, on both hands, tuck your two end fingers in, your ring finger and your pinky, and then make claws with your thumb and your other two fingers. Claws are gonna face each other and they're gonna go up and down. Dinosaur. Dinosaur. One more time, nice and slow. Make your T-Rex arms and your T-Rex hands. Dinosaur. Small explorers, in today's story time book, we saw all different types of dinosaurs, different shapes and sizes, dinosaurs that ate different things. We're gonna see a couple different types of dinosaurs um, that are shown here at the New Jersey State Museum, starting with our state dinosaur. Did you guys know we have a state dinosaur? Our state dinosaur is right behind me. This is Hadrosaurus fulci, also known as the duck-billed dinosaur. It was discovered in Haddonfield, New Jersey, and it sounds like it's named after the town, right? Haddonfield, Hadrosaur, but Hadrosaur actually means bulky lizard, but it's a good way to remember it. Now the skeleton behind me is what paleontologists today think Hadrosaurus fulci looked like and how it walked and moved. See, he's walking on all fours, but maybe he could stretch up on two legs to get to higher points. Scientists that first discovered him thought that had the Hadrosaur looked very different. So what is a fossil? Most of the fossils I've shown you have been pieces of animals, like our prehistoric turtle, our dinosaurs, our prehistoric crocodiles. So a fossil really is anything that gives us evidence of what life was like on Earth millions of years ago. It can be a bone, a tooth, a claw, an armored plate, but it can also be other things things that these creatures left behind that, get, that teach us about how they lived, how they moved, what they ate, and sometimes even what their outsides looked like. Dinosaur footprints can show us how big these dinosaurs were um, and what their feet looked like and what the skin on the bottom of their feet looked like. Can you see the dinosaur footprint in this rock? Let's count the toes, ready? One, two, three toes. And sometimes we get fossil impressions of dinosaur skin or feathers, like with our teeny tiny Archaeopteryx. This dinosaur was a feathered dinosaur. Do you see the feathers? See the feather impressions in the, in the fossil? So fossils like this give us more of an idea of what these different dinosaurs look like. He looks a little like a bird. He has feathers, but not like a bird. He also has teeth and he has a bony, long bony tail. Small explorers, do these two dinosaurs remind you of anyone that you've seen? They look a little like a T-Rex, but they're smaller and they have bigger hands with huge eight inch claws. These dinosaurs are called dryptosaurs and they were the first carnivorous dinosaur ever found. That means a carnivore is an is a animal that eats meat. They were, also, they were also discovered here in New Jersey from small pieces of jaw, leg, hip, and backbones 
and one of those eight inch claws from their hands. Those claws are where they get their name. Trip Dryptosaur means tearing lizard. And right next to them over here, you can see that we have a T-Rex skull. That should give you a little bit of an idea of how much smaller the Dryptosaurs are from the T-Rex. They look similar, but they're smaller and they have bigger hands. So to talk to us a little bit more about New Jersey dinosaurs, let's say hi to Dr. Dana once again. Hello. Hi, I'm Dr. Dana and I'm the Assistant Curator of Natural History at the New Jersey State Museum. And today I want to take a couple minutes to talk about how paleontologists know what dinosaurs look like. So here we have our duck-billed dinosaur, Hadrosaurus fulci, on display at the New Jersey State Museum. You'll notice that today we, we have Hadrosaurus standing on two legs with its front legs down near close to the ground and its tail standing straight out behind its body. But that's not how scientists always had Hadrosaurus posed. When Hadrosaurus was first described back in the 1800s, these are the only bones that were found. Parts of its hip and back leg, parts of its front leg, and some of the tail bones or vertebrae in, in the tail. And it was described by paleontologist Joseph Leidy back in the 1860s. When he put it on display uh, in Philadelphia back in 1868, Hadrosaurus was standing upright with its tail dragging on the ground and its front arms tucked in close to its body. Dr. Lighty hired famous artist Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins to take the few bones that he had and reconstruct a skeleton. So all the parts that were missing were made out of plaster. And Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins used modern lizards as a good model on to how to put the skeleton back together. Because back during this time, most paleontologists believe that dinosaurs were just slow walking lizards. So you can see that Hadrosaurus's tail was dragging on the ground and it was standing very tall and upright on two legs. We used to call this the kangaroo pose because it was actually standing like a kangaroo using its back two legs and its tail for support. This is an actual picture of what the skeleton looked like when it was on display. And you can see that the hadrosaurus was also holding onto a tree. And that was done just because the skeleton was so heavy that Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins needed to have it holding onto something so that skeleton could stand up. But today, paleontologists know that Hadrosaurus stood and looked very different than these early pictures. And we know this because we use fossil evidence. And so, for instance, we know that Hadrosaurus was not dragging his tail on the ground because we have footprints from other duck-billed dinosaurs, like these footprints here and there are no drag lines from a tail in between its feet. So we know that the tail must have been up off the ground. Other fossils that we use for evidence on how hadrosaurs probably looked are dinosaur mummies, like this specimen of Edmontosaurus from the Western United States that actually has fossilized skin and muscles preserved. And these muscles that run along the tail tell us that the tail was held straight out when it was alive. There's preserved skin on its forearm, so it can tell us about the texture of the skin and the scales on its body as well. So what does Hadrosaurus look like? Well, Hadrosaurus probably looks more like this, like what we have on display at the museum. It kept its tail straight out because of those, those tough muscles that we found down the the back bone of the tail. We know that they were walking mostly on two legs and could go down on all fours. And some duck-billed dinosaur 
front arms have actually been found with little hoofs on them, almost like horses. So we believe they probably walked on two legs, but could go down on all four to eat plants when the plants were close to the ground. We don't really know what colors hadrosaurus were, so special artists called paleo artists that reconstruct extinct animals kind of guess as to what kind of colors they might have had. Another dinosaur from New Jersey that we have on display is Dryptosaurus aquilungus, the smaller cousin to Tyrannosaurus rex. And this dinosaur was found in New Jersey in the 1860s and was described by a paleontologist named Edward Drinker Cope. And this picture is the first reconstruction of Dryptosaurus. You can see that Edward Drinker Cope had him standing on two legs with its tail on the ground. It was actually near the beach with plesiosaurs swimming around it. And there's our hadrosaurus in the background that looks like a giant lizard trying to climb a tree. Later in the 1890s, uh, the first paleo artist, Charles R. Knight, did, did this amazing painting of Dryptosaurus where there are two Dryptosaurus fighting one another. And this is one of the first times that scientists and paleontologists uh, depicted or showed dinosaurs being very active. They're actually fighting one another. Uh, you can see that Dryptosaurus had three big toes with claws on its feet. And you can see in this painting, his little hand had five fingers. Now today we know that that's not true. This is a reconstruction of Dryptosaurus at the New Jersey State Museum. And these are casts of bones that have been found. And this is an artist reconstruction. You'll notice that Dryptosaurus, like T-Rex, had small front hands. And we believe that they actually had three claws and fingers on their front hands. But no complete hand has ever been found. So we try to piece together what Dryptosaurus might have looked like from its cousins where we have better skeletons preserved. So dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus rex that lived out in the Western United States and another cousin to Dryptosaurus called Appalachosaurus that was found in Alabama. We don't know if Dryptosaurus had feathers on it. Other dinosaurs related to Dryptosaurus like the raptors have been found with feather impressions but no Dryptosaur skeletons or bones have been found with feathers. So this is another case of paleo artists recreating the dinosaurs they think might have looked this way by putting some downy feathers on them and some bright colors around their heads. Thanks very much and have a great day. Thank you so much, Dr. Dana. Small explorers, I wanted to show you this map real quick. This is a map of present day New Jersey and it shows all the different places where we have found fossils. So if I zoom in over here, we have a Dryptosaur right here, it's discovered right here in Mercer County. There's our Hadrosaur down in Haddonfield and another Dryptosaur discovered in the same area. As paleontologists have made more and more discoveries, the fossil record has grown. That's the sum total of all of, all of the fossils that have been found. And we learn from all of those fossils. So as we saw today from the first display of Hadrosaur to this one, we've learned a lot and it is okay to change your mind about something when you learn more about it. An important part of science is being able to change your mind when you make a new discovery. And that goes for a lot of things. You know, it is okay to change your mind when you have learned more about something. And it's also okay to make mistakes. Mistakes are how we learn and grow. Small explorers, let's play a game. Wherever you are right now, I want you to stand up and I want you to try and pose like this hadrosaur. Remember, this is what the first paleontologists thought the hadrosaur looked like. It's not what we think it looked like now. Can you make that pose? 
How do they think it walked? Do you think it can walk fast or slow that way? Okay, small explorers, let's play our game again. Wherever you are, stand up. And I want you to try and pose like our hadrosaur. You need to get down on all fours. How do you think hadrosaur walked? How did he move? Give it a try. So as we said earlier, paleontologists and artists back in the 1800s didn't really know what dinosaurs looked like. They kind of thought they were these big, slow moving lumbering beasts. But Charles Knight thought that dinosaurs were aggressive and fast and able to jump, especially the dryptosaurs. So small explorers, let's play our game again. Take a close look at the dryptosaurs and stand up. Do you think the dryptosaurs walked on two legs or four? Do you think that they were slow and dragged their tails? Or do you think they could run really fast? Give it a try. Tuck your arms in. Remember, we need teeny tiny, remember we need teeny tiny dryptosaur arms. Remember to make some big dryptosaur claws like in our sign language sign. And jump and run like a dryptosaur. Small explorers, thank you so much for joining me today. Remember, you matter and your family matters. So stay safe and keep learning. I'll see you next time. Rawr!